32 different editions, 16 different languages all over the world. I've come across Anna Van Gables in Port of Spain, Trinidad, and West Berlin. We had did a Swedish version. Here's the Finnish version of Anne. Of course, the Japanese, one of several editions in six different Japanese dialects. And of course, our own Canadian edition, with our own Gracie Finley on the cover. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Anne Shirley. It's spelled with an E. I mean, the Anne part as well as the Shirley. Lucy Maud Montgomery was looking through a newspaper one day and saw an item about a couple in New Brunswick who had hoped to get a boy from an orphan asylum, and they suddenly got a girl and uh, tried to get rid of her and couldn't because they found out they didn't want to get rid of her after a while. And the point about the story was that it fascinates me is that the little girl is still alive. She's a very old lady now. Uh, but as of 1970, I haven't checked my facts recently, she was still there. So Anna Green Gables is a very real person to us. Well, we're not going to throw you out of doors tonight at any rate. Now, what's your name? Would you please call me Cordelia? Call you Cordelia? Is that your name? Well, no. It's not exactly my name. Well, actually, it's Anne. Anne Shirley. But whenever I'm in dire anguish, I always imagine that my name is Cordelia. At least, I always have of late years. Sticks. If your name is Anne, then that's what you should be called. It's a good, plain, sensible name. We took the book and tried to put it exactly on stage the way it appears, but one element we had to leave out. When you're doing a musical, the music substitutes for something else in the original material. We could not get Anne's imagination on the stage. The world that she created, we extended into music and used lyrics and the lyric quality to make up for the imaginative thing. Hello? Norman? Hey, where are you? I'm in California. I took an awful chance. I called you to the station. The station. Listen, <clears throat> I've got, I worked out some lyrics for Humble Pie, and I think they work. But I can't remember what the song goes like. da 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 Okay, well, look, let me, that's, I think it's going to work. Let, 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 me, let me try it and give it to you. And if it doesn't scream. Okay? I wish I had the piano. Humble Pie, Humble Pie. We can eat it, you and I. And never mind about the key. Okay, with a smile all the while, try to walk the second mile. You like all that book biblical reference there? Turn the other cheek against the crowd. I guess that covers the whole New Testament. Right. You can do it, just... You can do it, just you try it. Why not try my steady diet? You know, they're Ogden... What's his name? Oh, yeah. We'll be happy eating humble pie. Then back to the beginning. Humble pie, humble pie. Hey, who's paying for this call? You or me? I'm paying for it. That's why I'm ringing off. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. One of the amazing things, I think, about Anna Green Gables, and something which uh, still gives me pause after seven years with the show, is the enduring appeal of it. Uh, it seems to transcend all boundaries of age, sophistication, you have it, you know, you name it. Uh, when the show opened here in 1965, it was the first full-scale musical ever commissioned by the Charlottetown Festival. It was an immediate hit, an opening night, and a local reviewer said that she had the sense that the people in the audience were in on the beginning of something very unique. Well, they were prophetic words, because through eight years, through great changes in cast, in fact, at the moment, I think only two of the original cast remain with the show, the essential appeal of Anna Green Gables has never diminished. Can you fear? Can you fear? I will never fear. You always have a little bit of news. Well, I never did you ever. I suppose she thinks she's clever. We'll be marked for life with such an awful bruise. In the schoolroom's pretty head. I think Gilbert's good as dead. He was took by the little car to Charlottetown. She's a piece of Satan's finest. time, you know, when uh, Anne almost became a, a sort of albatross around the 
the neck of the Charlottetown Festival. Uh, it was the making of the festival. It's still the festival's biggest breadwinner. But we found that when we were thinking about casting new shows, we always had to worry about Anne of Green Gables first and then fit the other people into the other shows. So really, I guess you could say we began to tinker with the casting a little bit. For instance, two years ago, we began to cast taller dancers. For a while, uh, the festival was beginning to look like the Alan Lund Midget Ballet Corps. So we cast taller dancers, and sure enough, it didn't make the slightest particle of difference to the enjoyment of the show. <laughs> to add a number of things and uh, the concert scene which had been done as a straight play a piece of dialogue we decided a song was needed and when Liberace had uh, gone to all the trouble of uh, sending me up a piano to have in my apartment uh, we thought it was only right to uh, create a song which would uh, remember Prince Edward Island uh, uh, as a matter of fact explain it to Londoners Prince Edward Island the heart of the world set in the crossroads of the sea Island, the heart of the world, set in the crossroads of the sea. 